My good. And can I start off by joining in the congratulations to Deputy Bit Kelleher and wish him all the best on his trip to Europe and hope he does a good job out there. Um, he'll be missed off the committee. Um, Minister, the question I, have to, I want to ask you is about the idea and if the idea considers the shortage of housing in a given area when they are um, consulting multinational firms looking for a location where to open or expand from here. There have been numerous job up, major job announcements, particularly for the Dublin area recently, which of course are all very, very welcome, but many people are asking where are these people going to live, considering there isn't an affordable house to be got anywhere in the capital. Thank you very much, Minister Patry. I'm taking this this morning. Um, I'm caught here looking. I want to thank Deputy, for raise, uh, Deputy Quinlan for raising this issue. Um, can I say, first of all, global competition for foreign direct investment is very intense. Uh, we compete against many other countries and many other big cities from all over the world. And when it comes to securing new job rich FDIs from overseas, uh, that's why the IDA's main priority, can I say, Deputy Quinlan, is in, in efforts, first of all, to win the projects and to ensure that Ireland is selected by the firm in question. And once that's achieved, and that's a big achievement to achieve that, the agency does everything it can to encourage companies to locate or expand into regional locations. Uh, this is consistent with both the IDA's current policy, uh, which has targeted an ambitious increase in regional investment by the end of 2019, and in the government's wider approach of strengthening enterprise all over Ireland. This giant focus on the regions is yielding significant results. As was evident again from the IDA's mid-year uh, jobs and investment figures for 2019, with 50% of jobs now located outside of Dublin. The government also wants uh, our principal cities to remain highly attractive to multinational firms. Dublin, in particular, with its international profile and track record as a home of many successful overseas companies, will continue to be a, a favoured destination for many investors, as evidenced again, as you rightly pointed out, by recent job announcements. That is very much positive that we have a strong capital city uh, to generate investment in, it, in the country as a whole. But it's also the case that our cities and regions are competing against the rest of the world rather than again, rather again, uh, again than one another for investment projects. As regards housing market, housing market well, the, particularly in terms of increasing supply, uh, that's well documented, as you know, Deputy Quinlan. It's important to make it clear that these difficulties uh, are not attributable to multinational firms and. and and the jobs they have created, whether it's in Dublin or elsewhere. The root cause of our housing difficulties, of course, is much more complicated than that. I think you know that yourself as well. The government's focus has been on addressing those housing problems and delivering fair and sustainable solutions over the short, medium and long term. This is why we are implementing Rebuilding Ireland Action Plan, you, which Minister. includes financing measures, new construction and rental sector improvements. As, as for the first quarter of 2019, there have been almost 19,000 new houses completed, an increase of 25 per cent compared to the same time last year. Dwellings uh, in the Dublin and the <coughs> Mid-East region account for 60 per cent of those completed properties. This is a welcome development, given the demand for housing in the highest and, part of the country. And the remainder is on the record, and you will have an opportunity to come back. Deputy Quinlan. Thanks very much. Uh, Minister, look, I'm not suggesting for a minute that the IDA are causing the, house, the housing crisis or, or contributing to it. I'm just suggesting that it, there is a problem around housing. And unfortunately, the government uh, have completely failed to stabilise the housing market or build enough social and affordable housing to meet the needs of the people. So that, that's the problem we're trying to raise here. It's a sad state of affairs that due to the shambolic housing policy of the government, we now have to con <coughs> be concerned about literally not having enough dwellings to house new workers and their families for jobs being created here. I understand we compete with the rest of the world for, for jobs, and it, it is, I, I said in my initial contribution that I welcome every single job that's, that's, that's approved, whether that's for Dublin or for the regions. Um, I'm not objecting to these F FDI job announcements whatsoever, and they, they do provide excellent opportunities for people here, and it, but it's a concern that there will be no places for pe people to work. In addition, many of these FDI jobs are very well paid again, which is really great, but this means that these workers can outbid other low-paid workers for the few houses that are available to rent, putting further pressures on low-income families. It's crazy the government have allowed this to escalate to such a point. Thank you, so the, the question for the Minister and her department is what, actu 
interactions have the department had with the Minister for Housing about this specific issue and have business and the IDA expressed Thank concern you. of the lack of housing for workers <coughs> and if yeah, they have to what extent have done that. Yeah, well, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Quinn. Can I say, first of all, uh, and, and, and Minister Humphreys and myself, we travel in trade missions uh, around the globe, and this is not a problem just confined to Ireland. I was in Seattle last year, uh, which is the home of Amazon, the home of Microsoft, and I met the mayor there, and the big problem they have there is shortage of housing as well for companies. So this is a problem that's been addressed all, all over the place. But can I say to you, um, Deputy Quinlan, uh, we've seen the success of the action plan for jobs, how successful we were in that area. And rebuilding Ireland will be successful as well. Planning permissions were granted last year, as you know, for nearly 29,000 new homes up to the end of quarter one of 2019. And that's up 21% from the previous year. Uh, in Dublin alone, nearly 9,000 homes were granted plan permission. Again, an increase on the previous year. So it is happening. Houses are being built. But can I say to you, um, you know, when a company comes here to Ireland, yes, the idea have an important role, as I, as I said in my answer, in first of all, ensuring that they come to Ireland. But these companies bring their own estates people in to look at where they want to locate uh, first well, in, and what regions they want to build in. And uh, they select eventually where they want to go. And they take into that into all account in relation to the housing in the area, the services in the area, whether it's the schools, universities, all that. All that's taken into place. And if you look at the number of new jobs announced in recent times, uh, you look at the, the, the Minister Humphreys announced 800 jobs Thanks, in Minister. Lincoln there last week, all, and Facebook nearly a couple of thousand jobs as well. All these considerations have been taken into place, and the companies know that they can get the, the houses for Thank their employees. Final comment, Deputy Thanks Minister. again, Minister, for your response. But I think we, we do need more, much more work to be done in this area. Uh, can I just ask, has the Minister, uh, or the Minister for State, considered offering IDA client companies better incentives to locate in rural areas or gale tucked areas, for example? This would bring much needed employment to those areas and also reduce the pressure on the housing market in urban areas. I appreciate, that, and we said this already, that it's a decision of a client company at the end of the day where they, where they want to locate, but it would be much better to have a fair spread of FDI investment. So the, the question is, has the Minister held any discussions about this with the IDA, and can you tell us if business representative groups have expressed concern with you about the shortage of housing for, the, for workers? That's, Thank you very that's much. the main question. Obviously, sure. Deputy, there are no incentives for locating in Dublin, but can I say to you something? The one thing that attracts many companies, foreign direct investors, into Ireland, and, and the one thing that, that attracts them is and into the regions, and, and I mean, you're a Limerick person yourself, and you've seen good investment there in recent times in, in Limerick and, and, and Limerick City, uh, but I would say to you, the one thing that attracts them is quality of life. Quality of life is very important for many companies now, the whole area of wellness and their employees, um, you know, in living in, a, in a, an environment where they can produce more, be more competitive, and, and work in, in that type of environment. So, uh, you, you know, the regions are doing well. Uh, and you know yourself in Limerick, look at the medical technology sector, the, how well it's doing in Limerick at the moment, the pharma sector as well. Companies tend to follow other companies uh, and clusters seem to grow all the time. So uh, as I said to you in my answer, nearly 50% of new jobs last year were outside of Dublin. Same thing can be said for the Enterprise Ireland jobs. Uh, it's higher again, 60% plus. So, you know, there's a lot happening around the regions. Uh, jobs growth uh, in, in all the regions have, have uh, you know, it's, it's significant in the last number of years. We're happy with that. And that's why Future Jobs Ireland and the, and, and the regional action plans will contribute to ensure that we can grow jobs in the region, and we are doing it.